Welcome to the Legends of Master Show, everyone. I'm your host, Tom Wheeler, and I'm very excited to introduce our guest today. He is a very talented actor that has helped bring to life some amazing movies and TV shows, including iconic characters like the Leprechaun from The Leprechaun Returns. Welcome to the show, the amazing Lyndon Porco. Hello. Hello, hello. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Oh, uh, my pleasure, man. Big fan of your work. Super excited to talk with you. Um, and, you know, kind of get things started off. Uh, you know, I, I like to kind of give a little origin story or background uh, for our guests. Uh, so you're you're originally, you're from Canada, correct? Correct, yeah, yep. Now, at what point in your life, because it's not to some people the most natural thing in the world to go, hey, I want to be in movies and TV shows. And When did you sort of kind of get the, the desire to do that or the acting bug, if you will? Yeah, no, I, so I think it all started when I was, was younger. I My parents, I think, put me up for a, a Toys R Us kind of, um, oh, and really? shoot as a, as a kid because um, as a baby uh, you know being a little person I was, I was pretty darn cute so yeah. uh, it kind of it kind of yeah. spoiled itself oh there you go <laughs> exactly exactly that's it right there but very photogenic got the pose down and everything I love it yeah yeah for sure so that's kind of like where it all started um, and then which which then led to uh taking acting classes at uh, Manitoba Theater for Young People um, oh, really? back in back in Winnipeg, Canada, and um, just kind of continued doing that. I was doing that when I was, since I was like six years old, I, I was doing kind of oh, wow. um, acting and, and theater work uh, then, and then leading more into uh, film and television. Uh, so I started to train for, for, for that more. So... That's kind of where it all started and uh, kind of just rolled with it. And I, I've loved it ever since day one. So Amazing. I, I love hearing that too. And I do love hearing that, you know, some people, whether they're in film or TV or both, uh, they do have a, a, a beginning in theater. So it's sort of like how you get like your acting muscles first like developed. Is it, is it that translate over pretty good for you going from like theater to that? Is a, a sharpen your skills? For sure. So, so back then it was more just getting, uh, being comfortable on, on stage and in front of people and stuff like that. I, I was uh, really dumb back in the day. I was told you have to pick which side you want to go to, either theater or film. I was actually oh. told that. So uh, my mind always went to, to film and, and, and television where as I look back on those days, I'm thinking, how much of an idiot am I? Like you can do both, you know what I mean? So that's kind of where I'm frustrated myself in the sense. I was like, why didn't I, why did I close that door even when I could have had uh, both lanes open and, and going out for a whole bunch of different stuff. So um, Interesting. looking back on that, uh, that's the, that's one thing I, I do regret about, about theater for sure. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting. And, um, and I like to bounce around on a show a little bit for everybody. Uh, you know, if you do everything year by year, but you're just boring for everybody involved. Uh, so I want to bounce right in this because actually we recently had uh, the writer and director of Leprechaun Return, Steven Kostansky, on the show. And, um, you know, I, I first kind of came by him with this uh, Psycho Gorman, his most recent release. Fell in love with that and went down the rabbit hole of all his films, The Void and Leprechaun Returns. I mean, talk about an amazing franchise. I mean, huge, huge yeah. franchise. Uh, you know, you had, um, especially Warwick Davis, you know, starting that whole thing off. I mean, such an iconic uh, actor himself. What was that like for you taking on that role? Because this was like a like a true sequel to the original uh, Leprechaun. Yeah. Um, so obviously I, I knew about the, the franchise and, and stuff beforehand. Uh, so I, I, to be honest with you, I, I'm not a huge fan of horror, so I never okay. actually watched the Leprechaun franchise until uh, I was actually in South Africa filming the filming the movie. I, I didn't want to um, replicate necessarily Warwick Davis' performance, um, which kind of was in the back of my mind, that, and that's kind of why I didn't want to watch the film right away or to, okay. and whatnot. But I did want to watch it in the sense of to get the feel for it being um, the sequel to the original film. So nice. that's, and, to, and to pick up certain things that, that Warwick Davis did in order to uh, better portray 
the uh, the leprechaun as well. But at the end of the day, I did want it to be um, kind of my own take on it, but as well as staying true to what the franchise wanted and who the leprechaun is as a character. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, it, it's still obviously in the back of my mind as well, yeah. but you know, it is Warwick Davis who was the original leprechaun. So, right. And, and that and that's huge, right? So I, I I was aware of it. I just didn't I didn't want it to. Um, I guess you could say, uh, kind of tower over me in a sense. Um, okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So I I I mean having having Will with Davis being the leprechaun is 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 amazing. But I still wanted to make it my own, and that way I could give a hundred and ten percent to to the performance as well, and not. Uh, you know, be in the back of my mind, having another voice. Right. Yeah. Right. And bring, you know, bring your own, you know, spin on it. <clears throat> and I'll pop this in here too, because the prosthetics and everything that were absolutely amazing in this movie, um, you know, and right here, right here, it's, it's just a, you know, rough day at work, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, uh, just having to emote, you know, obviously you have dialogue to give, um, you have, you know, te- you know, the teeth prosthetics, everything, man. What is that like uh, having it? Act, act in in the prosthetics and makeup like that. Does it does it help in certain ways? In other ways, a lot of uh, as far as moting the face expressions, things like that. Yeah. So um, I think it. What so what happened with me was I put on the the, the first kind of layer of the prosthetics and to see the process while I'm in the chair um, really got the feel for the character and I I. I kind of transformed into the leprechaun as they were applying the prosthetics. So if anything, I think it helped the prosthetics with the character for sure. Uh, Cause I just, I got in, I got into it immediately when I was got into the chair and had that, that first piece of prosthetic put on me. Wow. Okay, it's go time. Uh, it's so interesting. And, and, you know, Steven does an amazing job in his films, all his films. Um, mm-hmm. With and especially in particular, getting like the real world application of things in there, like you you really have that that object in front of you versus a, a computer. I mean, some things he'll do like a miniature or something like that. But uh, you know, how much does that help, or or did you notice on set uh, when as you were filming this movie in particular, having that real world uh, application right, you know, right there in front of you? Oh, it's great. I mean, it's as an actor, it's it's incredibly helpful um, to be to have like all these real, in a sense, um, not real kills, but you know, yeah. you, you, know you know exactly what I'm trying to say yeah. for sure. But so just to have that and to see it, to react off of, as well as, um, you know, these, these unrealistic things that are happening in the movie to have them yeah. um, sort of be as real as possible and helped as, as an actor, I find it incredible. And which is what I, I'm wanting to, um, uh, put into my future projects as well is to make it as, as real life as possible for, to get those natural reactions as well as um, give the audience, you know, those big moments like, Oh wait, this was done that way. Okay. That's pretty sick. And then they can look (laughs) further and, and kind of go into detail that way. But yeah. Amazing. And and, and another great thing about this film as we're wrapping up on this, uh, this film alone is, uh, uh, you know, having another, uh, Original character from the original movie, uh, Mark uh, Holton taking on Ozzy again. Uh, of which, uh, not only is that a great hat now, but you have a, a film coming up with him uh, as well, a stream uh, that's coming up for release. Yes, for uh, sure. Uh, super excited for that, by the way. Um, but yeah, I, you know, as far as fan reaction uh, and for Leprechaun Returns, you know, how much did you have that, especially like the appreciation of just like like bringing back uh, Ozzy as a character and and the work you did to really. Yeah, like again, like a true sequel to the original. How, what what uh, kind of words on the street were you you're getting the most? Uh, I it was a lot of excitement, you know, when when the trailer came out of of the Leprechaun returning, no pun intended. Yeah. Um, but uh, and then to have to have Ozzy come back as well, that was uh, I mean that was as a franchise, that's always kind of you know what you look for at the end of the day is to them to bring people back and, and yeah. And, you know, it, it, cre- it created, uh, uh, in my opinion, a, a better leprechaun because he was there for sure. So, um, yeah. that was great. And, and he was awesome to, to be with. And, 
uh, on oh, yeah. and whatnot. So it was it was just awesome. And let's just say uh, everyone should definitely check this movie out, you know, especially if you're in the horror, of course. Uh, but let's just say you gave him a, a bit of an upset stomach. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, you can say that. <laughs> Um, I wanted to bring this up too because this this guy was a, a, a bit of like a hero or a, or someone you looked up to, so to speak, uh, and that's uh, Vern Troyer. And this is a, a way way back in the day. Uh, yeah. um, you know, for for you, like not only that, I believe uh, he even like, kind of invited you on stage. And you know, what was that like for you uh, meeting him? And what kind of uh, uh, advice that he gave you that kind of uh, helped you in, in your career? Um, yeah, so it, it, it all kind of all started in um, a World of Wheels, which is a car show um, that he was uh, at and signing autographs and, and meeting fans. And my, my mom found out about that. And so uh, she was like, okay, hey, we're going to go do this today. And I was like, okay, sounds good. You know, meet another little person, which was great and, yeah. and whatnot. So he, has, he had the same type of dwarfism as me. And so that was, right. something I think my mom really wanted us to connect on and kind of just understand, you know, what it, it's like to be a little person in this day and age and whatnot. So he helped me uh, tremendously in, in, wow. getting the, uh, in getting the part of, of Little Man. Um, yes. He, uh, he got his um, uh, manager at the time to reach out and, and help me find, uh, find a job. So I had to send in my physical ability to them and one thing led to another and the next thing i know i was i was on uh, on a plane to uh, la for a screen test with uh, with marlon wayans and and the it was it was it was fantastic so i mean i i really owe my whole to career to, to him and and uh, and his manager so uh amazing. it uh, that's kind of where it really like really really took off Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's not like he was an amazing guy, especially giving back like that. Um, and yeah, and that's a perfect segue into this uh, little man, which uh, number one, I mean, the, the Wayans family are just I iconic, right? Like super, super iconic. Yeah. And the, and the way that they did this, I mean, you, <laughs> I mean, they literally computer this image together and it was very seamless. Uh, man, I mean, you go from like, you know, you know, meeting Vern at, at, at this trade show and to, on set with these these icons like this, you know, here, here's Keen Ivory and and yeah. right here Tracy Morgan. I mean, Morgan. what was that like for you? That that transition was a big like shock or uh, what was that surreal? Yeah, I you know I think I because I was so young, I was I was nine years old at the time that I was just taking it day by day. I didn't really look at them as um, you know famous people they are. I just looked at them as 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 regular people in, in this business that I'm wanting to learn more about, um, and, and, and which they did, they, they taught me so much it's just from the, from the first day of being on set to the last, there was always something, uh, else to, to learn. And so that was definitely helpful. Um, and, and then being just so another family really what it came down to and i've got another a little special feature in um in little man at the end or whatnot there's a special feature it's called linden's world and i'm pretty sure you can watch it on youtube as well so and it kind of went behind the like my life and, and you know what it was like on set for me and and whatnot so that was uh, that was very awesome for them to do that for me because that wasn't the original plan they just did it because they 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 enjoyed having me on set and, and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it, looking back on it, it's, it's, it's priceless, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it means, it means the world to me that, uh, that they did that and they treated me like, uh, like their family and, and whatnot. Yeah. It was great. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, sure. uh, yeah, it's just, it's so interesting seeing that side of things and not to mention, I mean, what were your thoughts? Like, I mean, you're on set and you're doing all this stuff, uh, uh for a little man, but like, seeing Marlon's face on your body <laughs> what was your and, and and result thought when as a nine-year-old looking at that yeah yeah uh so the the, the finished product i i um i knew what it was going to be like because we would shoot for eight hours during the day and then they would go and shoot for another four to six hours of green screen with marlon oh, okay. to, um to put his head on my body uh and so i kind of had an idea of of 
what was what was going to happen and what it was going to look like and and whatnot. But when I saw it, I was like, okay, this is this is pretty freaking sick. That yeah, they 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 took my body and then put his head on my body, which was you know it's just un, unheard of yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, and for them to do it, it was they made it look look like you said seamless. So yeah, amazing. That's amazing. Um, and, and, you know, I have a couple guests recently on the show. Uh, we even had uh, Doug Morrow uh, on the show. Yeah. And, and, you know, obviously preparing for you. You guys, uh, I, I heard about this uh, show in the past, but I never delved into it because you guys, I did. I'm so happy I did. Uh, everybody should definitely go check out Channel Zero and in particular uh, season three with you. Uh, you played this nice, lovely character here. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. You know, enough, this is a really, really well done show. Very uh Let's just say eerie at times, but the very the storytelling is amazing. Yes. Uh, what was the, your experience like filming this? So this was a lot of fun. Um, uh, one of the casting directors in Winnipeg was in talks with uh, the show uh, for for a couple of years of kind of wanting me wanting to get me in into uh, a role on this thing. So I'm uh, really appreciative of that as well. That was that was awesome um, and whatnot. Uh, and then going and, and filming it, um, Rutger Hoyer was actually one that yeah. wanted me in more and more uh, of the scenes with him. So that is something that uh, I will never forget as well. Um, yeah, that was that was it's that was it's tough, you know. Yeah. Um, it's a legend by himself. I mean, yeah, you know, and, and you know, same thing with you know with, with Ruger. I, I mean. And, and Vern, like, I mean, these are guys, you know, they, they inspire and their work will, I mean, they're greatly missed, but their work will continue to work, you know, live on and inspire more and more. I mean, to this day, you hear on both sides. Uh, that's the subject I wanted to bring up with you because, you know, you know, acting opposite in this case with Ruger Hauer, uh, I mean, you had to have amazing on, it's almost like onset schooling or college, if you will. Like, uh, there were some like interesting onset. Uh, lessons, whether it's for life lessons or career lessons, what, what, what kind of takeaways have you had, whether it was with Ruker or anybody you've been on set with? Um, I think just see the art and everything that's going around in the world um, is one thing I took uh, took away from, from Michael Hoyer. Um, he, he, uh, he, he, he fiddled around with certain things in the scene in order to make it more personable, personable to him, which I find as an actor that you can't have enough of, you know what I mean? So okay. in order to, to bring those, you know, uh, nuances into, into your scene is something that I'm definitely going to look forward to doing in my future as well. And to uh, be more and more a part of, of each project uh, in the sense of saying, Oh, well, what about this? Or what about that? In order to, uh, to be as natural in it as, as I possibly can be. So that's one thing I learned from him. And then um, just from every other project that I've done, just absorbing everybody's feedback as well as um, okay. knowledge in, in what's going on in, in the world as well as the, the show or movie um, is just being completely open and, and being able to acknowledge everything and, take it for a grain of salt, but uh, be open to, to possible change for sure. Oh, that's amazing takeaway. I uh, love that. Um, yeah. And then again, boss Rami, you've been a part of uh, amazing things. This is another, uh, a major franchise uh, going back to horror films, of course. Uh, <laughs> and that is uh, the cult of Chucky. Uh, you get some uh, scenes you're part of cut this in here as well. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, you know, again, another uh, iconic uh, character, uh, what scenes particular uh, were you a part of and you know what kind of uh, you know sticks out in memory to you the most as being a part of this this film uh so yeah the i was it, what, not, nothing too too crazy uh they just wanted um some some feet walking around underneath the so i was the a, a body double for oh, okay. um so they wanted some feet underneath the uh i guess you could say the gurney uh in the hospital oh, okay. And okay. so I, I would just do kind of that stuff, and then some shadows on the walls and in the, in the main hallway because it's all white. They wanted some some bigger shadows um, and whatnot. Uh, but one one memory that I'll that I'll never forget is uh, eat, having lunch with uh, with some of the cast and um, Don Mancini just 
takes his lunch and walks right up to our table and sits down and starts eating with us. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> the director is eating lunch with the cast right now. Like, you know, you just it's something that you don't necessarily see very often. Um, because they're, you know, with, with the production and trying to figure out what's going to happen on after lunch and whatnot. So that is a memory that I'll, that I'll never forget that uh, in the sense I'm like, okay, this is, this is amazing. So, yeah. Oh, that's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah you, you never know from like one thing to the next, you know, <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and, and bounce around here too. Uh, another amazing film, part of Netflix film, uh, babysitter's guide to monster hunting. Um, and, and you specifically with the, uh, the toadies, Yep. You know, now this is, you know, I'm imagining this has got to be a little different, you know, more uh, uh, mo -cap, motion caption, uh, like suit work. Is that how they were shooting that for you? Uh, so I was actually in a green suit and they would have little markers, It's kind of like the opposite of what they did with little men in a sense. Interesting. Um, I was in a green suit and they would use that as markers for the toadies um, and, and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, it's a little bit different than, than obviously than little man, but kind of in the same idea of what they were trying to do in, in those aspects for sure. Oh, that, that, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. You just, that different movie magic that goes into it and, you know, from one thing to the next and there, you know, there's something we said, right. We said earlier about, you know, this onset real life application, you know, the, you know, this guy's in that costume, he's in the costume and there's things like that. Imagine at least having you there, the other actors on set had like, you know, more of an eyeline of what to the, the see and, and react to and things like that. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. Amazing. I think, that's, I think that's really important. At least from just the experience that I've, I've had on set is to have, um, you know, physical voice as well as, um, uh, you know, seeing the other person, definitely helps as an actor rather than it being, um, you know, somebody else saying just the lines and, and whatnot. Yes. You know, I mean, I want to bring that up because you had some like, like uh, in Leprechaun, you know, uh, Leprechaun Returns, you, you, you had a lot more dialogue. Obviously you had a, a whole, uh, even more character development to work on. You got the accent. Of course, there was like some pre preceding that, but you know, the way you approach that was amazing because it didn't feel like, uh, thank you, uh, you know, it, it's 100% because you didn't feel like, um, right. There's this kind of, dancing in the middle of the lines like i don't want to do an impression of what was done i want to do something new but i want to something so i want something so, somewhat familiar so for you approaching a role like that you know from a, more of an acting standpoint because of course we have prosthetics and things like that there's so much more that goes into that preparation for a role you know for you what is, what is that uh uh getting your own headspace for that character what, what is your sort of process like uh yeah i guess you could say my process is is um as simple as I want it to be, um, okay. but it's 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 never as simple as that. So in in that sense, um, I like to read the script or the scene that I'm doing once beforehand without any um, knowledgement of, of of anything kind of going on in in, in in the life in order to just get my first real take of what's going on in the scene. And then after after that, I, I you know start filling the my back end with knowledge and more knowledge and more knowledge, in order to uh, you know push myself further in the scene as well. Uh, next comes I uh, working with uh, this teacher that I've been working with with the past four or five years now, um, really getting the backstory behind the character uh, in order to propel me in order and. In the forefront so so i don't have to necessarily think about anything else i can just be completely natural in the scene but i have all that i've done all that work beforehand in order to to get to that point so that's what i've been doing for the past uh, few years and i found it it's it's truly helped me a lot um and just in, in growing as an actor um but then at the end of the day i think it just comes down to having doing that work that you've done and then just trusting yourself in the moment to and yeah. being in the moment with that other person, because that's where the true acting comes in into play. It's 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 just about 100%. as natural as you can be with having all this other knowledge of, of who you're supposed to be as well. I love that. Yeah, so yeah, the way you were there, you know, you're growing as an actor, and there's more to that too. I want to bring this up. I love this this side of things because you know you may start it as one thing and then develop your you know you start off as a body double, a little man, and you worked your way and more and more with your acting skills. 
um, you know, getting behind the camera on things. You go into this, you know, writing side of things and, you know, these subjects that uh, are very important to you, writing, directing, and your voice, your stories. Yeah, so um, definitely the, the, the midget script is definitely still in, in process of writing. I've changed a lot of things uh, along the way um, just to try and make it as as – as great, but uh, as as possible without trying kind of changing it for somebody else's opinion. I, I still wanted nice. it to be my my own, um, but you know, making it more relatable to uh, to the the average human being who doesn't necessarily understand what it is like to be a little person. So that at the end of the day, I'm, I'm trying to get that done. I'm hoping by the end of this year, but you know, with what's going on in the world, it's not yeah. necessarily. Uh, you, just, you, don't, you don't know what's go, what's what, when it's going to happen or when it's not going to happen. So um, I'm still in the process of, you know, writing rewrites and, and all that stuff as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, look forward to that eventually down the road, as well as many different ideas that I have of writing um, um, as well. So it's uh, definitely something in the future that I want to do more of is, write and, and produce and, and direct. Uh, I, I, I want to awesome. do it all. So, um, yeah. That's awesome. And, and, you know, we kind of brought up earlier, especially, you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, the, the variety is the spice of life, so to speak. You know, it, I imagine, you know, other stories you hear with uh, uh, Peter Dinklage and Warwick Davis, you know, on the, the, the little side of things, you know, there's only so many like roles out there. And uh, I mean, there's like a, a uh, sort of like a documentary that was on uh, Vern Troyer is in and all that going into that aspect of it. it's like everything was just like I'm in a costume or I'm in or it's a holiday picture or something of that nature I mean I think it's one of the biggest things like especially Warwick Davis I mean he's always put on the mat to me because uh that was the first time you really saw like you know there, there's a whole village here and, and that the main actor is a little person what, you know what do you see on that side of things and what would you like to see more of, so to speak, as far as roles for, for a, a, a little person side of things? Yeah. Um, so I think in this day and age with, with what's going on right now, it's, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different uh, things going on in the industry that need to be talked about it and that need to be, uh, that need to be said and then they need to change. So um, I think, uh, you know, one day, uh, you know the little people and people with disability it'll 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 come to the forefront in that but right now it, that's not necessarily the uh the most important topic uh in, in the industry right now so um yeah. I, I, I will wait on that for sure yeah but you know i what i what i would like to see change in the future is them not you know them being open to to a little person playing um any type of role uh, it, it doesn't matter if it's if it's meant for a little person or not. We're we are part of this world, and and and, and they, they don't necessarily see that as 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 an option sometimes, and, and that's fine, and that and that and that's the way that they that they think about it. But um, at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I can tell you one thing: people who are different are going to work a hell of a lot harder than the people who aren't. And um, that's I, I I stand by that, and uh, will continue to uh, until the day I die. Amazing. That's that's amazing takeaway. A lot. Uh, there's so much so much truth in it. Um, yeah, and, and, and you know, you know, different actors doing different breakthroughs like that. I mean, I think it's very poetic. I, I just actually love this side of the story when I, especially when you got the you know the, your your story of like, all right, you know, you, you met for Vern Troyer. You got um, he had, you know got some tips, uh, some wisdom, so to speak. He helped mm -hmm. uh, set you up the the Little Man movie, and then sort of skyrocket. You know, take it from there. It's sort of like you know the script is starting to flip, where like you're becoming that for people now. Like uh, people like you are wanting to break into this. What is? What, do you even cog cognizant with that, or what's that feel like, man? Um, I mean, that's the first time kind of somebody else has ever said that to me. So, um, uh, yeah. Wow. Oh, geez. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh, I mean, thank you. Uh, as well as to anybody who, you know, is, is wanting to be a little person actor or to anybody who wants to be an actor in general, just um, never give up. This this industry is tough. And um, to be frank, it's, it's, it's not always fun. Um, okay. But it... Uh, it, it, at the end of the day, it's it's worth it because you are uh, you're, you're creating and, and you're being 
um, completely vulnerable. And, and that is uh, something that, you know, you can't necessarily get um, in, t- in a, uh, in a nine to five job. So, uh, right. you know, it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's amazing to, to hear that. And, you know, please reach out and, and uh, I would be happy to, you know, respond to anybody who has any questions or has, uh, you know, anything they would like to say, I'll, I'll do my best to, to respond as, as best as I can. So thank Amazing. you. Great, a great response to that. Cause yeah, cause that is what, where it's at. I, I just always love seeing the, the, you know, people's journey and their, their pathway where they start to where they go. And, you know, things can have a flow along the way. You may have one goal, but you know, like you said here, you got some scripts in the lineup and, and, and doing your own uh, films and, and things like productions. That, that sounds uh, amazing. Looking out for that for sure. Uh, you actually have another thing coming up, uh, and, and that is uh, Nightmare Alley. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we, we are 100% spoiler free here, and obviously on your end, there's NDAs and stuff. But I can at least ask, what was it like working with uh, Guillermo del Toro? Because I hear this guy is an absolute riot. I mean, he it, it was it was amazing um, just being on the set and trying to. Uh, uh, see, uh, you know, embrace again all the knowledge that is going on in, on this on this set and on this production. Uh, so it was it was nice to uh, kind of hang out after uh, the scene uh, was over and and um, just uh, just accept what was going on in, behind the scenes as well as in front of the screen. And uh, it was. Uh, Definitely a, a great experience that I'll, that I'll never forget and hope uh, hope to work again with, with him in the future. Awesome. I want to pop this up for everybody. Uh, this is all his social media, uh, Instagram. Definitely go check out his IDB page. You're gonna, he has tons of amazing work you want to check out. Uh, and his uh, Instagram, uh, which quite the golfer, by the way. I love to golf. Yes, definitely. I just uh, just went out on Friday myself and, you know, had a, had a couple of good shots, had a couple of bad, but that's the way of the world down there. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show, man. I'm super excited to talk with you. I love your work. Uh, the things you have in the lineup look amazing. And uh, honestly, you, know, you have um, just a really, really uh, cool and, and inspirational story along the way. And and uh, looking forward to the future, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me on the show. And um, hopefully we'll be able to do this again sometime. Thanks for listening, everyone. Hope you all enjoyed the show. For more great interviews and content, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Legends and Master Show. Also, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Be sure to go to our website, www.legendsandmastershow.com, and join our email list for all coming shows, events, and articles. See you on the next one.